Hi there. Welcome to Real Guitar Success Live. Great to have you here today. Today, we're going to do a live training on stretching your fingers. You ready to stretch? I'm ready. Okay. Um, along with that, just so you know, for those who are new, the way we do this is I'll give you a live training and then we'll go ahead and answer your questions. Feel free to type in your questions in the comment fields. We're gonna first deal with the people who have sent questions ahead of time, and then with the time left over, answer all the questions we can in the comments. With pleasure as well. Yeah. This is Ami Field. Hey, hey. I'm Thomas Michaud. Welcome. Now, at the end, we are gonna do a giveaway for all those who are members of our Real Guitar Success program and have completed the monthly practice session. So that'll be fun too. We're giving away a $50 Amazon gift card. Mm. Let's get started. Yeah. Stretching your fingers. Now, I got this training idea from someone who asked a question and basically they asked me, Tom, I'm having a hard time, you know, just making chords and doing anything that looks close to what you seem to be able to do effortlessly. Um, is there some exercises? Is there some way to stretch my fingers so that uh, I won't struggle so much with any little stretches in the chords? I thought about it and you know, I take for granted that I do uh, both some warm up stretches as well as exercises on the guitar every time I practice. And I don't even think about it anymore. It's just like natural for me to yeah. just go ahead and start doing that. So I organized what I do and put it into a, a little program that uh, now I'm, I've even organized my practice session a little bit more. Let's start out with, I'm gonna start out with kind of a basic warm up routine that doesn't use the guitar. Okay. And the idea, this, this is something I learned because as I started to get older, my fingers started to get more tighter and sore. Mm -hmm. And I was playing so much, I would play sometimes eight hours straight. I was, I was uh, doing performances in a mall and they had me start from the mall open till the end of the day. Oh my gosh. Good, great practice, but you know, it took its toll on my hands and fingers, mostly it. tightening and they started to get sore. Yeah. So um, the first exercise I like to do is to just kind of get warmed up and I'll massage my upper wrist and my forearm. Mm. And here's what I'm after is I want to move, what I'm actually trying to do is get that blood circulating down to my hands. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of pushing towards my hands. And let's do the other arm too. Ooh, mine are tight. Yeah, this is... <laughs> This is good, I think, even if you don't play guitar. Sure. I was told by someone who wasn't uh, a guitarist that this is really good to improve uh, lymph node drainage, which is mm, your lymph will nodes. help you get sick less often. Yeah. And they were recommending I start from up here and go down. But I, I do shorten it for the guitar because I want to get to the playing the guitar. Mm -hmm. Now the fingers. Go ahead and just massage each of your fingers, starting with the left hand. I usually go a little slower than this, I guess, to be honest. I feel, I feel like I need to go fast for everybody out there to get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do the right hand. Now, I'm going to do just a very light stretch on the fingers. And it mm. looks like this. I take each of my fingers and pull them in with my thumb. Start with the left hand. Mm -hmm. So I'm stretching right in here. Oh, that first It's a pretty one. light stretch. Yeah, next finger. The pinky is hard. Pinky. <laughs> okay, and let's do the right hand, same thing. Just use your thumb to pull it in. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting to the more strenuous exercise. See, I'm warming them up, so I'm not starting out with the most strenuous stretch. Mm -hmm. Shake it out a little bit. Now, here is uh, a little more strenuous exercise. We're going to Make the prayer position right out in front of your face. And then there's a little hard rhythm guitar here. Matter of fact, let me sit down so I do it justice. We're going to pull the hands down. And I'm stretching as I do that. You feel it? Uh -huh. <laughs> right in here. Hold it. I usually hold it for five seconds. And then I come up and point outwards and pull in. Hold it for five seconds. Wow. Now you feel it's a different kind of stretch. Now I'm stretching up in here. Yeah. And here. Not so much the fingers. I can if I really pull it in, but that's not the focus. Now that's one round. We're going to do five rounds. So start again. Hold it for five. If you don't hold it, you're not really getting much of a stretch. 
And again, in. That's two. I didn't know my wrists were tight. <laughs> Three. Yeah, I can feel my fingers. Four. Yeah, I can feel the... By the way, the fingers don't have muscles. They have ligaments, mm -hmm. tendons rather, tendons. And we're stretching the tendons in the fingers and the muscles in the hands. Okay, last one. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. Four, five. I'll try to make sure I do this one just to shake it out again. Okay. Now, another fairly light stretch. Just take your right hand, either hand, of course. So we'll start with the right and pull back. Let's do 10. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Now, a principle is, let's do the left hand, mm -hmm. no pain. Discomfort's okay, but if it's really hurting, that's too much. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shake it out. Now, the other thing is try to stay relaxed. Don't stress and, mm -hmm. and create more tension in the exercise. And breathe. It, it helps. <sighs> um, now, a little more strenuous exercise. We're ready for it now. You're warmed up. Yeah. We're going to take one finger at a time. We'll start with the right hand. Again, it doesn't matter. And pull it back. Again, it's okay. Discomfort's okay, but if it hurts, that's a little too far. Now, wiggle the other fingers. <laughs> you can feel that one. Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, I usually hold it for five. Now go on to the next finger. What do they call this one? The middle finger, huh? Yeah. Wiggle. <laughs> yeah, you feel it, huh? Yes, I do. Now the <laughs> middle finger, okay? Ring finger. Ring finger. Back. Yeah. So you still wiggle all of them, including yeah. your thumb and your pinkies? Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. I feel it mostly on the wiggle. Now the pinky. I, I, but this one, I don't feel anything. I cut my finger so it doesn't look right. <laughs> Okay, let's do the left hand. We'll start with the index. Index, I know. <laughs> should your hand be at an, an angle like this, or should it be straight or like what? Um, I'm going for a stretch. I don't know about the angle, but gotcha. I find that, you know, I don't want to go like this, because now I'm uh, harder to stretch. Mm -hmm. Okay, next finger. That's the middle. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> yes, needed that. <laughs> Okay, and the ring finger. This one I can tell because I got a ring on it. <laughs> this one's hard. Yeah. And finally, <laughs> the pinky. There you go. Okay. Now, a couple more. These, I actually learned both of these in judo, and they really work. First one is we're going to take the thumb and bend it towards our forearm. Start mm -hmm. with the right hand. You grab it with your fingers and then lock with your thumb and pull in. Now this is gonna get a good stretch in your thumb and your wrist. Wow. I usually hold this for 10, by the way. Felix can put his thumb all the way to his arm. Ah. Felix is our tech guy back there. <laughs> some people are naturally looser than others, but also some people are double jointed and double joint, um, this one in particular can go all the way down. Sure. Okay, next arm. Hand, this is a hand thing. Okay. We'll say that seven, eight, nine, ten. And then the final stretch. Well, I should say the final. It's not final exercise. Second, we're going to take the outside of the hand, twist it away from our body and down. You feel that? Yeah. Huh? Different, like different muscles there in the wrist and the back of the hand. It's like I'm trying to break my own wrist. One of the principles is you try to get the muscles on both sides of the hand so one doesn't get stretched and not the other. Because mm -hmm. you're risking, when you make other muscles tight and some stretch, you're risking the muscles. Now the left hand, oh, okay. <laughs> We're gonna do a, a final stretch that'll help relieve that. Oof. We're getting the blood circulating. Mm -hmm. Tendons and muscles stretched. This actually, is a good health practice in general. Hands together. Now let's do a figure eight. Either way. Ooh. Six, seven, 
eight, and then the other way. I'm supposed to go slow. <laughs> Five. Slow down, Thomas. Okay, shake it out. <laughs> That's the routine. Usually 10 minutes max. <laughs> Sometimes if I rush through it, it's more like five, six minutes. Yeah. Uh, but I, I try to be present and go slow. Now we're ready to go to the guitar. All right. Here's the best exercise I found to stretch the fingers. And by the way, I, I just remembered I forgot one exercise. Let's just do this with the guitar. Mm -hmm. Put your left hand up and stretch between the fingers. Oh, this yeah. is preparation for what we're going to do on the guitar. <laughs> Next. Probably hold this for at least five, ten. Mm -hmm. We'll go a little faster now because we're onto the guitar, okay? And then the other hand. There we go. Five, stretch these two. And then this one. Four, five. Okay, good. Now shake it out. Here we go. This exercise is going to stretch between the fingers and particularly between the index and the pinky. Hmm. Now, one thing you need to understand about the guitar to, to understand how this works is that the frets are closer together up towards the body of the guitar and farther apart as you get to the headstock. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the exercise here and then move it back depending on your capacity. If you're a brand new beginner, I wouldn't move it. I would stay right here. If you've been playing for a while, you're going to want to move it all the way back. I still do this exercise every day. Hmm. I don't start here. I start way down as low and go all the way up here. So that's the more advanced version. We're going to start from the very beginning. We're going to put the first finger on the first fret of the sixth string. First fret? Of the sixth string is the low E string. Fifth fret of the sixth string. Yeah, right? Fifth oh, fret. Oh, fifth fret. Okay. My mistake. No worries. Second finger on the sixth fret. Mm -hmm. Third finger on the seventh fret. Mm -hmm. And the pinky on the eighth fret. Uh, how do you get your pinky all the way to the top? Like that? Like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, a couple of tips. I'm great that I'm easier because that's not hard for me. But... Part of it has to do with hand position. If you're doing this, you'll never get your pinky there. Mm -hmm. Your hand needs to be straight up and down, and your thumb roughly, it doesn't have to be exact, in the middle of your hand. Not way over to the left or to the right, but often people put it way over to the left. So the thumb is up and down, and as you put your fingers on, you're just going to have a complete even distance from here to here. If you do this, you've made the distance from here to here much farther. Mm. Flatten your thumb out, and then let your hand come up and down. First fret, uh, fifth fret, mm -hmm. first finger, second, third, and keep all the fingers down. Now move this hand up this way. Woo! Yeah. Oh, now you got it. That feels funny. Good, very good. Uh, your thumb could go down a little more. So it's a little high. It was up in here, and, and a little bit lower will give you a little more room to move. There yeah, it is. There you are. Your thumb could be a little more over here, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see you're, you're getting it. Your hand is starting to go more up and down. Good. Cool. Now, here's the actual exercise. You're going to hit one note with your right hand at a time. Straight down strumming now. You're not worried about strumming. And try to relax your elbow so it's just hanging. Don't tighten it up. Mm -hmm. Let's do the first note, which is the fifth fret. Second note. Third note. And keep all the fingers down. If you let them up, it's not stretching. And the eighth fret. Now onto the fifth string. Good. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. First. <laughs> and next note. Next note. And next note. Now the fourth string. Start. Kind of got the pattern. <laughs> yep. Now the third string. Notice as I go down, my fingers are getting more curled. Second string. And first string. Curl, curl the fingers even more, yeah. A little more space right there, yeah, like that. 
Okay, stop, shake it out. Now, for you, that would be the exercise mm -hmm. right there. If that's fairly easy or when it gets to be easy, mm -hmm. you move down a fret. Ah, so fourth fret. Fourth fret. Now the frets are a little farther apart. You increase the stretch. position went a long ways. Second string. And first string. Now start on the third fret. Second string, good, and first string. Second fret. Ooh, now it's getting hard. <laughs> Second, fifth string. Stay to the end, I'll show you the advanced one for those of you who this is still easy. First string. And finally the first fret. Now the, the frets are farthest apart here. I missed it. First string. Okay, now for the most advanced version of this exercise. Mm -hmm. Here's what it looks like. We start with the open string. And I'm just gonna do it quick because if this is hard up to here, I would stay there mm -hmm. and, and move back until, until that gets easy. Then this advanced exercise, you're gonna do more notes. I start with the open string. Okay, now watch here. I stop on the fourth fret. Now I shift my hand up to the fifth fret. There we are. And now to the ninth fret. Now down. tips as you do the exercise make sure you leave your fingers on the frets as you go up otherwise you're not stretching make sure you get your fingers go slow and get your fingers in the right place that's one of the advantages of doing exercises like this when you're playing you don't have time to think oh did I get that in the exact right place what you're doing is developing a habit that your fingers go into the right places and that means close to the fret but not on top of the fret if it's too far back, it's gonna buzz easy or you have to press really hard to get the note. So you aim for just the beautiful position. The other thing is a good arc in your hand. The more your hand is like this, the more you'll have to press, the more strength you'll have to use to get the note. You wanna use as little strength, as little effort as possible. And keep the hand relaxed. If you feel it tensing up, take it, stop, relax, and then come back at it. Now, you want to up the ante. You've gotten this far and this is still easy. You're going slow. Start pushing the speed. Mm -hmm. Once you got the technique right, start pushing it. I use a metronome and measure the speed. Mm -hmm. Start a slow click, maybe, you know, 50 beats per minute. Click, click, click. 
click, click. I'd even write it down when I wanted to actually improve my technique. I'd write down, today I did 50 beats per minute, today I did 55. I like that idea. Then I go back, I, 55 seems hard, but I'll go back to 50 and kind of ease it up again. That's and, really cool. It's a nice way to track that. And it makes it a little fun, kind of a challenge. Yeah. You know? So you can keep improving your speed along with you having good technique. You're having good thumb position, good finger angle. Don't go any faster than you can do it right because that bad habits will transfer into your playing. Yeah. Okay. So those are the exercises that I trust all of you will do every day now from now on. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> for the rest of your lives. Let's see. I think we're ready for questions. Yeah, I do have we'll a question. Let's start with the ones that people um, on the paper sure, definitely. present ahead of time. Yeah. So these are the questions we got ahead of time. And if any of y'all have questions, please submit them through the chat. Uh, okay, so we have somebody that says, I have short, fat fingers and have real trouble with reaching, say, from the fifth fret to the ninth fret at the same time with my index and pinky. I've been trying to stretch it forever. Fifth fret to the ninth fret. So, first of all, uh, let me at least address, there are smaller and bigger guitars. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you really have tiny fingers, you might want to play a smaller guitar. There are steel string guitars that are sound great. That little, what do they call it? The little travel Martin travel guitar. Yeah, travel guitars. Yeah. A lot of uh, people with small fingers tell me they love that guitar. And there's other brands of the same thing. I I had a Yamaha. Um, I don't have it now, but I I deliberately used it because it was smaller and easier to travel with, and it sounded great. The little uh, Yamaha. I forget the model number. So, uh, uh, and they're nylon string guitars we use all the time, for, especially for students. Mm -hmm. uh, they call them seven eighths or three quarter to indicate they're slightly smaller. That said, stretching is not the only issue. Notice how I worked with Ami on the hand position. Mm -hmm. Her fingers were plenty stretched enough to reach from the fifth to seven, but her hand position was holding her back. Yeah. And it was a combination of relaxing, getting the hand up and down instead of even a slight angle, and then a better arc so that I pulled her palm out a little bit. And she had no problem making it. That's likely more of an issue than stretching your fingers if you're going from the fifth mm. to ninth fret, because that's not a big stretch. Yeah. And then from that point on, you do this exercise so that you little by little, you are stretching between those fingers. When that gets to be easier, then you start going down fret by fret. Yeah, definitely. That's a great answer. Um, we've got Steve who submitted a question beforehand. Uh, he says, also related to my fingers is on some chord, I can't help muting the lower string with my middle finger, even when I play the my, even when I play with my finger straight on or angled. What can I do to solve these issues? Help please. Steve asked both of these questions, by the way. Okay. Well, um, as far as the middle finger goes, I, I would have to see that. That's, that's kind of vague in the sense of I can't quite picture exactly what's going on for you. I will say in general that if you're having a hard time playing chords, what I've seen students often do is they, they go too fast in the progress of material and not spend enough time on getting some of the foundation stuff right. So. I would suggest you might want to back up to just a few chords and work on them slowly and transition from one to the other instead of trying to play. And of course, I don't know you. I don't know if you're if you only are playing one or two chords, but I just know that's been a common issue. I see students all the time learning a chord and they kind of got it and they go on to another chord, another chord. Then they're trying to play songs with three chords they can barely play. Yeah. Um, they're just piling problem on top of problem and then they get to a breaking point and they can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I think what Steve is talking about is actually something I spent an entire lesson on yesterday with one of my students. Wonderful. Um, what luck. So what I'm thinking is that, let's say that, for example, you're playing on the second fret of this string here. I think what Steve is saying is that when he's pressing here, he's accidentally muting this string. Oh, he's hitting so, another string. So he's hitting another string. So How did you deal um, with that? So what, what I did with my student, it's a little different for ukulele because it's smaller, is I made a really deep indentation crease on my finger and showed them exactly where on my finger the line stayed. Um, when she did it herself, it ended up that her line was like way down in the middle of her finger and oh. mine was closer to my nail. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so what it was doing was just showing her that it's about the angle of what you're hitting it. So even though you say you're hitting straight on, again, it can have to do with the hand positioning thing. Um, because if you're if you're like this and your thumb is curling up at the top and you're hitting it straight on, 
I mean, I am like perpendicular to the neck, but I'm totally muting the string underneath that, that string right there, right? By the way, just for the record, sometimes you do want to mute the string. I know that's not the issue here, but it's not bad. It's just you're getting, you're doing a technique that is unwanted at this particular time. So it's not wrong. There are yes. times that I make a chord, I want to mute a few strings and I'll deliberately angle my fingers or bring them down a little bit to touch the other string. Yeah. And one thing, what my student learned yesterday, and she's a teenage girl, was that her nails were too long. Because what was happening is that with your nails too long, you can't be, you can't get straight on top of the fret like that. You're at an angle, so you're automatically muting the other string. Whereas if I don't have a, a nail, I can get there a little bit easier. I find for myself, they don't have to get very long on the left hand to be a problem. No, they don't. Yeah, I can just barely see mine from my palm, and I'm already starting to feel it when I'm playing. Yeah, yeah. what's happening is the nail is hitting the... Um, guitar neck, the fretboard, before your finger can press all the way down. Right. So you have to adjust your finger so the nail doesn't hit, which causes it to hit the other strings. Yeah, exactly. We have a couple of uh, other questions submitted beforehand, and then I have a few folks online that have questions. Great. Uh, Ronald says, how to be able to play bar chords? My fingers won't lay down for the bar or stretch for them. Yes, it's a common problem, bar chords. And um, first, when I have students learn bar chords, with many students who've been playing for a while, they have to kind of change their attitude mm -hmm. because they jump into playing a bar chord because they need it for a song. And they pick the F chord, which is actually one of the harder bar chords. And they're doing a lot of things wrong, but they get frustrated and basically don't come back at it again until they need it for another song or they give up on that one. And I have students prepare. And in that vein, I would like to suggest an exercise that is preparation for doing a bar chord. Mm -hmm. The exercise goes like this. You put your finger flat across the neck just before the first fret. So you're making basically a bar chord, but don't press down yet. Okay. Light. Now, you're gonna strike each of the strings, starting from the sixth string, and press down as you do that. And make a good clear note, and then relax. Again, see if I don't relax, that's what it sounds like. I mean, if I don't press down. Press down the fifth string oh. and relax. Now fourth string and relax. Third string and relax. Second string, relax. Ah, good, mine's not clear. And first string, good. Now with you, I would go on, but I keep paying attention because you're gonna focus on eventually getting that second string to sound. Mm -hmm. Go up to the second fret. By the way, this gets easier as you go up. Because it's going to go up, I'll say the fifth fret for right now. Mm -hmm. Start with sixth string, go. Fifth, next, next. See if you can get to the second string, next. Ah. There you go. So what she's doing is she's making a little adjustment mm -hmm. to get that second string to sound. And she might not remember what she did the first time, but if she does that, her body is gonna after a while say, oh, that's what we gotta do. Mm -hmm. By the way, one little tip is keep your knuckle at least parallel, if not a little higher. I've seen a lot of people like lower down and that oh, makes it yeah. harder. You have to press really hard to get yeah. notes down. Let's go on to the third fret, next. Sixth string, fifth, next, 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 and next. By the way, it's okay to get help from your second finger. I don't need it right now, but that's perfectly fine. Believe me, it'll take care of itself after a while. Fourth fret, go. I'm, I'm deliberately putting my second finger to show you what I mean. Good, good, okay. You made an adjustment and it made it work. Okay, let's do it again. Fifth fret. Okay, shake it out. Oh, that hurts. That's one round. Now, the thing is, you need to do about 100 of those before you go on to play bar chords. You think I'm exaggerating, but I'm trying to get you to see that bar chords are hard, and to expect to just play them and, and they work after three or four tries, it's, it's not reasonable. I had a tennis instructor that told me one time, taught me a certain number of tennis techniques, and said, now go out and practice this, hit 1,000 balls, I hope he was exaggerating because I didn't hit a thousand <laughs> balls, but <laughs> go out and hit a thousand balls and then come back and we'll take what you've done, make some adjustments where you got off and go on to the next techniques. So you do this, do this as part of your practice 
every day for at least a week before you start trying to play bar chords again. And do it not once, but at least five, ten times a day. Mm -hmm. Do it several times a day. Do it five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. You will play bar chords. And one day you will look back and say, that used to be a problem. Oh, that was silly. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, bar chords are tricky. They're not the easiest. Okay, so uh, here's another one from online. Duncan says, what scale would be best to learn first, and can you show us how to play through it at different locations on the guitar? Oh, well, first of all, if you were learning your first scale, I wouldn't want you to play it at different locations on the guitar. <laughs> now, why? You were not going to need it. If you're just learning your first scale, you're not going to be playing all up in here, and you've added a complexity. Mm -hmm. I would learn a appropriate scale down here and a few other scales to go with it, practice those, and then start moving up maybe one position, I call them, at mm -hmm. a time. I'd say open, first position, second position, so up, up the neck. Mm -hmm. Now it depends. If you're playing rock guitar and you're only going to need one scale ever, <laughs> maybe I would learn the a pentatonic scale and start with one position. Start using it. See, the other thing is, yeah. um, if you just know your scales up and down and you start trying to improvise with that, you're asking for trouble because you should be paying attention to what the notes sound like and how they're phrased and work with the other chords, yeah. not where your hands are going to go all up and down the neck. Exactly. So start with one position and make music out of it and then start adding positions on either side of it and so on. Mm -hmm. How about you? What would you teach students for a first scale? Uh, well, ukulele, it's a little bit different just because our chord, common chord progressions are a little different than that we would do on the guitar. I typically start with two different scales for my students. I start with the C major, um, just because on uke it's a very easy finger positioning, uh, and it's easy because I'm doing it around the same time they're learning how to read music too. Yes. So it makes sense. Uh, and then the second one I teach them is the chromatic one. And well, what's the first one again? Uh, C major scale. The C major. Yep, okay. just C major. Uh, and then I also teach them the chromatic scale, mainly because I'm helping them memorize finger positioning and memorize what notes that they're on because that's a thing that I do with most of my students is teach them how to read music. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and it's just, I think it's a really great ear training exercise that you can start hearing the little differences between notes. So that way when you are ready to do things like improvise, you at least have an understanding of where notes are relative to each other. When I have guitar students that are going to either be playing classical or just in kind of general folk and reading music, I start with the C scale. Mm -hmm. It's because it, it, it'll help me make sense with reading notes as well as the music theory. Right. And I, I explain a lot of theory based on understanding the C scale. Exactly, yeah. When I have a student who is playing more like rock or improvising, and that's really what they want to do, they're not interested in reading music at this point. That, sure. That often changes as they get more into it. I start them with a pentatonic scale. Pentatonic yeah. is a five note scale. And on the guitar, the scales that seem to be easiest to improvise with are the E pentatonic and the A minor. I start with the A minor. And if it's an electric guitar, I'll often start with the first movable scale. What we mean by movable is you can move it up and down the neck. So this is A minor pentatonic. Blues scale, it's not really a blues scale, it's a minor pentatonic scale. It's great for improvising. I did add a blues note in there. That was the... So really a pentatonic means five notes. One, two, three, four, five. Then it starts over. One, two, three, four, five. And that is probably the most used scale in rock and blues, mm -hmm. especially on electric guitar. Um, and it's fifth fret, um, fifth fret, seventh fret, fifth fret. Some people use the third finger, by the way. I'm fine with my pinky, but... I, neither is right or wrong. Fifth, uh, fifth, six, seven. Eighth fret. Fifth, eight, fifth, seven, fifth, seven, fifth, seven, fifth, eight, fifth, eight. Mm -hmm. And I would stay there. I mean, you can move it, but you just don't need to at first. I would use it, get good at it, move, step up with speed, yeah. get the notes clear, and then start using an improvisation. Record some basic blues in A, or even in A. And then improvise over it, start playing some licks, get yeah. used to using it. Then start expanding it. You can say. Then start expanding into different positions. Yeah, yeah, that's a good answer. Mm, okay, we have a couple more. We've got Bill says, 
How can the Scarborough Fair melody and fingerstyle be played by an individual to make it one song, or can it? Ah, and I know where Bill's coming from because she was, he was playing a song, uh, Scarborough Fair, and he was playing the melody on the guitar and then playing the chords separately. So that would be called a duo. A duo would be where somebody plays one part and somebody plays another part. Mm -hmm. It can be two guitars, could be different instruments. A common way of doing that is to have a melody instrument like a flute or a violin play the melody and then a, a guitar or a piano play the rhythm parts. Mm -hmm. What he's asking is how can you play it solo? In other words, how can you play um, Scarborough Fair, the chords and melody at the same time on the guitar just by myself? Yeah. So um, a solo guitar is an arrangement. In other words, Somebody, it could be the guitar player themselves or somebody else and put it in sheet music, some way to teach it, has arranged it so that the melody and the chords fit together. So I'm trying to think of, uh, ah, uh, let me take old Susanna. <laughs> I should probably use a pick, but that's the melody, right? Everybody knows that melody. And the chords are, da, 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 da. I'm doing the melody now with my mouth. When you mm -hmm. sing, you're playing the melody with mm -hmm. your voice. Da, 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 da. So now I'm put the two together and I had to arrange this. I arranged it myself, mm -hmm. but you can find sheet music or, or um, sometimes online videos where you can watch what they're doing. So here's... I made that... A, a, Rhythm pattern. Oh, <laughs> I forgot it. <laughs> I mean, like last week. <laughs> Sorry, but I hope the idea gets across that that was supposed to be the melody and the chords together. I, I am so going to play this song and put it on the video. <laughs> you got to come back with it next month. Huh? Yeah, no, I, I'll do it in a video probably with today or the end of the day and put it on YouTube or yeah. within a few days. Take okay. me a while to get up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, We've got one more, and then we've got quite a few folks online who have questions. So Hugh says, I struggle with pick accuracy. I keep missing the intended string when picking notes. It is holding up my progress. Okay. Pick right-hand technique is what we call that. You need exercises to improve your pick accuracy. First of all, hold your pick right. There's not one way to do it. Depends on style, too. I often use a very small heavy pick for fast melody playing, and I hold that a little bit differently than I hold my regular flat pick. Mm -hmm. I use a medium pick because I want to be able, with a flat pick or the bigger pick, I want to be able to go to strumming. First exercise I would have you do is I would have you do this simple open string exercise. I'm hitting four times and I'm doing down up picking, mm -hmm. each string starting from the sixth low string. What this is working on, which is the biggest problem with people picking, is getting from one string to the other without screwing up, <laughs> hitting the wrong string. So you don't need a, a chord, it doesn't matter. Start with the low sixth string, then the fifth string. I'm going all the way up for a reason. Now go the other way. Ha, I missed it. Start over. At first, of course, you should look. But over time, you want to do it without looking because you really don't have time to look at the strings. You got your left hand to deal with. Mm -hmm. So 
do that a little every day, just that exercise. Then add to it a simple speed developer, which is going to be kind of like a chromatic exercise, similar to the exercise I did earlier. Mm -hmm. Open, first fret, second fret, third fret, and then over. So this is a fairly easy exercise, and I teach all brand new beginners with mm -hmm. just down picking. Mm -hmm. But now, if you want to work on your picking technique, you do it with up and down picking. So you're doing up and down on each string, but you're gonna to have to change at the right time. So it's open, up, down, up, and then down on the fifth string, down, next string, down. Now I'm gonna go backwards, and it changes. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Do that for another week or two. And they're more advanced exercises, but if, if those don't improve your playing, um, I would slow down and pay more attention to what you're doing, getting the picking right, and then speed up little by little. Yeah. Again, I have, I've seen over and over with students, and I've been um, guilty of it myself, trying to go faster than you can do it right, which actually just makes for a bad habit. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Get the metronome out and do this. Do it in the metronome and see where you can do it and do it right, relax and get it right, and where you can't. Then back up a notch or two from where you start screwing up and then keep trying to work past that point. Yeah, that's a good thing. I like that idea too of marking down somewhere what speed you were doing this at so that way you can kind of keep track of your progress instead of like shot in the dark every time. Like, oh, I think it was 60, but it may have been 80. Yes. Yeah. It does make it more fun. And keep in mind that you're not always just going to keep moving up. There'll be a point where you'll go up and then the next day you can't seem to get back up there. Yeah. Just flow with it. It's going to, progress is not a straight line. It kind of goes like this. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, we have a couple of folks who are with us live right now that have questions. So let's do it. Um, we're going to start with Laura, who's an RGS member. Hi, Laura. We're happy to have you here. She's been here from the beginning. Good. Hi, Laura. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so Laura says... I seem all good until I get to the pinky. I'm thinking specifically when we're working on those exercises. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Silly pinky. Um, she says, to be more specific, it's more about strength than stretching. Yep. Um, and although stretching it sometimes is an issue too, mainly strength, and I can totally relate to that. I think strength is the bigger, usually for people, it's a bigger issue than stretching with yeah. the pinky. Yeah. I mean, unless you just have small hands. That yeah. pinky feels What do you do for uh, strength on the pinky? I know what I do. Uh, let me think. I'm trying to think ukulele. Okay, so I do an exercise with my students similar to you. Um, I call mine the caterpillar. Um, oh, yeah, and essentially, I heard that. I think I heard you say that. Yeah, and this was the one that I think has really helped my pinky in general. And of course, it's for ukulele playing, so it's a little different. I'm sure you can adapt it to the guitar, though. And the idea is that oh. you're doing the same thing. However, you don't move your finger until it's, it's it's turn to move. So I'm going on my second string, open one, two, three, four. But if you notice, all the other fingers are still in place. That's cool, yes. That looks right? like a great exercise. Um, for, it's a coordination exercise too. It is, and then when I go backward, I just go one at a time, and this is where my pinky really gets to work. Because the pinky is the only one on there, so. You just keep work, working it until it's where it's supposed to be. Ah, I don't play guitar. Yeah. Okay, so you get the I point. I have the same problem, so I'm not looking. Yeah. So using that pinky isolation is one thing that's been really helpful for me. And even just taking little sections like that. like that may be helpful and that's just to work on getting that pinky to follow your directions because they are so stubborn that left pinky one thing I have students do and this is I have a, a more complex exercise but is make the G chord this way with the pinky and practice changing the D C and G this is a four finger G and it little it gets the pinky coordinated and stronger little at a time this is a light exercise so the G chord, just to be clear, is I have the first finger on the fifth string, second fret, second finger on the third string, uh, sixth string, third fret. 
Now the pinky and the third finger together, and the third finger is kind of supporting the pinky. It's touching it and kind of helping it out, or at least makes it feel secure, I don't know. Um, it sounds good too, it's kind of a cool version of G. It's, it's used a lot in pop rock music nowadays, current alternate, altern, what do you call it? Alternative, alternative? music. Yeah. yeah. Then, going to the D, it's an interesting, it's a good move, it's an easy move. You take the first two fingers and switch them around to make the D and take the pinky off and your third finger stays right there. So you've got an anchor finger. The C I was doing, I just moved these two fingers over to the fifth string and the fourth string. C add nine is the technical name. I just call it a C form chord. It's a little cooler version than the folk C. Strengthens the pinky. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the exercise I was taught early on, mm -hmm. and it was really hard at first, but it turned out to be a great exercise. Similar to what you're doing, it mm -hmm. looks like this. Hammer-ons. That really strengthens Ooh, the pinky. Oh, yeah. Now I go on to the next fret. Hammer-on second string, uh, second finger, third finger, and pinky. Two, three, four, third fret. Talk about strengthening okay. that pinky. Hammer on will do so it. So I wouldn't necessarily pick this as your first exercise if you're just starting out. But you might just want to try a light version of this just on the first fret. And ease into this as an exercise. Yeah, I see what Ami's doing. That might be a good stepping stone. She's, she's actually plucking both notes. So it's not a hammer on, she's just working the pinky. But hammering on is um, more strenuous yeah. because you're having to use your strength in the pinky to make the note. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it really, I mean, that's probably why my, I never have a problem with my pinky. I started this exercise early on and yeah. did it for years and still do it from time to time. And my, my pinky never causes me a problem. Yeah, a lot of my students with hammer-ons in particular struggle with how to do a hammer-on quick enough to not just mute it, so they end up with this. It takes quick, and it takes uh, a certain amount of strength. Yeah. But it also takes a little bit of a, um, you got to get the angle right coming exactly. straight down as opposed to like coming at from the side. Yeah, it's a tricky thing. That's a good one though, I like that. I'm going to have to adopt that helps, for my students. Yeah. Okay, um, so we've got some folks on YouTube who have joined us with some questions. Uh, Royce, hi Royce. Roy says, is there anything to stop the tip of the finger to stop hurting? Just your fingertips are hurting. Practice. Build calluses. Yeah, I, I have never worried about that. Be I assume if, if I'm practicing and my fingers are hurting, I just take a break and come back at it. It's kind of like it's a good thing for me that the tip of fingers are hurting. That's means it's working and I over the years I've developed um, not just calluses my fingers are not terribly calloused not not like they were early on they've just desensitized so mm -hmm. it, it doesn't hurt yeah so I really do think that practice and not overdoing it in one session but small sessions lots of them over time it probably solved that problem yeah but I have I've seen things where people will put even some crazy glue in their finger I don't think that's a good idea hmm. um I saw one bass player, and I think this might work on bass. I don't know about guitar. He actually has a very thin rubber glove he uses. Hmm. But he's able, the bass are really fat strings. Yeah. Mm. I can't think of anything else. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of, I've definitely, I'm definitely more on the boat and on the side of like, you just kind of work your way through it. Just because I think that if you kind of like, desensitize your fingers by wearing a glove or putting some layer of something on there it's not really doing you any favors because that means that they're always going to hurt when you do it without um i know it's a really common thing i get it a lot with a lot of my younger students so i work with a lot of five and six year olds and you can imagine for a five or six year old they're pressing down these things and it's uncomfortable i think relaxing your fingers is important and also like checking the action on your guitar taking it to a local shop that's a good one guitar um, 
I, I've seen students with good strings way high off their necks yeah. and I couldn't play them without hurting my fingers. Yeah, definitely. Because that, I mean, that'll, that'll play a huge difference. I'm, my ukulele, That's I know, a good point. has I, really good action. So if, if you have a decent guitar, I would, I would have it checked out and see if you have the action as low as you can. A good repairman can make sure it's low but still sound good. You don't want to just lower it to where it's buzzing and yeah. spreading out. If it's a really cheap guitar, they may not be able to do much. I would get a better guitar if it were me. Yeah. I guess everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, an action, for those of y'all that don't know, is the distance between the strings and the fretboard, right? Yeah. So if you have really high action, you're dealing with a space this big, it takes a lot of strength to and a lot of um, pressure on your fingers to be able to make those chords and, and notes sound good. Yeah. Uh, so that's my tip. Over time, too, I do have students work on pressing just as hard as they need to with a good mm -hmm. a guitar that's adjusted right and no more. Because students I often find will get in the habit of pressing really hard even if they don't need to and it's it's creating more uh, problems with their fingers than they need. Exactly. And it also slows them down because when you're playing fast, you, you press hard and you're committed and it takes you just a fraction of a, of a second to get to the next note. Whereas if you press just hard enough, and get you can get to the next note faster. That's one thing I do actually do an exercise with my students where I have them just lay their finger on top as if they're gonna play and pluck and start putting pressure until it comes out clear. Mm, that sounds good. And there it is, right? And sometimes I'll have students, they'll do that and they'll be like, oh, I was like killing my fingers. You know, their knuckles are turning white because they're pressing so hard. It's like, you don't have to press that hard, especially if the action is all good on your guitar. Yeah, a, a lot of guitarists, even professional guitarists, have had to kind of retrain because they get uh, problems in their fingers, carpal mm -hmm. tunnel kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And they need to practice and get the habit of pressing lighter to make the note so that they don't aggravate their uh, sheaths in their fingers. Here's kind of a question on piggybacking off of that question. Do, do the gauge of your strings also affect how hard that you need to press or how they can be affecting your fingers? Lighter strings will actually make it a lot easier and mm -hmm. um, you might want to consider that too. At the beginning anyway, you can always move up. And that they go, uh, for acoustic guitar, they go, uh, light would be the kind of a normal string what most people use. There is extra light, which I would recommend. There is even a string called silk and steel, mm -hmm. which is kind of a hybrid between nylon and metal. They, they're nylon on the outside, but or rather metal in the outside, but they have a nylon core, so they're easier to press down. Yeah. Um, medium strings are pretty heavy, really, for guitar. Yeah. And a lot of people who use medium strings have been playing for years, and they're playing a style of music where they want a louder sound. Right. It doesn't necessarily sound better, it sounds louder. Yeah. You know? So it, I would definitely at least go with the extra light. Problem is you break strings more easily, but sure. um, I find it a workable solution. Yeah, cool. Uh, Lauren says, would a guitar strap help with finger positioning for a beginner? I'm assuming she means hand positioning. It could, especially if your guitar is slipping down like this. I often have students, if I see their guitar slipping down, I'll make them wear a strap for a while. The thing with the strap is it keeps the guitar, you know, we adjust it so it's just sitting on the lap and, and they're not really putting a lot of pressure on their neck. Mm -hmm. It's just holding it up. If the guitar starts slipping down, then it starts pulling on their neck. I see. Yeah, and that... That can help, I think, with uh, correct hand position because it's really hard to get correct hand position once your guitar sure. slips down. And I know for me, and I'm not a guitarist, um, so I know for me one thing that stresses me out, if you will, when playing guitar is um, the idea of having to like use my hand to hold up the neck. Um, yeah. It's a little bit different. It's more so on ukulele because, I mean, you know, it's not like on your leg. Um, but I know that was one thing that was like a huge hindrance for me and still I mentally struggle with this idea that like, I don't have to hold up That's the a good guitar. Point. So a strap can sometimes alleviate that, that need. Yeah, I, I just realized. I, see, my guitar, I never hold it up with my left hand. Yeah, I'm always, every time I play guitar, I'm like trying to like support it in some way because I feel like it's going to fall. I don't know why. Yeah. It's clearly not going anywhere, but... Yeah, I'm sense. holding it in with my, kind of tucked under my right. arm. Yeah. But the uh, second advantage of wearing a strap is if you ever do want to stand and play, mm -hmm. your guitar stays in exactly the same spot. Yeah. Whereas if you get used to practicing this way and then you stand up and your guitar strap pulls it down here, it really messes things up. I, yeah. I learned that the hard way. Yeah. Cool. Um, Ken had a double question for us. Ken says, I'm beginning to take on the Travis picking technique. Cool. Do you have any advice when approaching practice? And the second half of that is... Should I be using finger picks? If so, what would you recommend? 
I've never used finger picks. I've tried them. I'll start there because it's easy. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. <laughs> so I have none to recommend. <laughs> um, but there are people who use them and use them wonderfully. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't say that they don't work for me. Yeah, I don't I, like it. I want to touch the strings. I feel it. I can... It feels weird to me have something between my fingers and the string. That's how I feel too. I totally only use my fingernails. This works for me. Pick between thumb and forefinger, and then I pick with these two fingers. Whoa! And the advantage here is now I can go... Oh, go back and forth. So cool. So cool. So it takes practice, of course, and, yeah. but I find that a very useful technique. Um, and then as far as Travis picking, I would... If you're learning the Travis pick, I would pick one of the more simpler patterns, and I do have some lessons on this several in, in my Real Guitar Success membership, mm -hmm. where we start with getting that bass line, and then adding a note, then adding several notes, and so on, keep progressing till it gets to be... Now I'm adding the fifth, sixth string now. That I do need all three fingers for, so I couldn't use a pick when I'm, I'm hitting, I'm alternating between different melody notes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, I, I think we did an RGS Live with Travis. Oh, yeah. Finger picking yeah. a long there's time a, ago. There's an RGS Live with a breakdown of the Travis, yeah. of a Travis picking pattern. Travis picking is a you know, is a, um, associated with Merle Travis, but there are many variations on it now, so there's not one Travis pick. Mm -hmm. And it generally refers to a pick where you have this alternating bass note. Yeah, that's good. Travis picking sounds super pretty. Uh, okay, and so Jillian says, Hi Thomas, do you have, a, do you have a graph for that pentatonic scale? Um, um, I will find one. Yeah, cool. I will find one, and or, or I'll direct you to a, a lesson that has it. Cool. Yes. Cool. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, Royce says, I've been using a soft rubber ball to strengthen my fingers. Probably like a, like a racquetball, maybe? Soft rubber I don't ball. know. Um, there are people who swear by these little machines. They have little things like yeah. each thing and you squeeze down. I don't like it. They're like valves almost. I don't huh? like it. It seems to me that strengthening the fingers beyond... Um, What's needed for the guitar is just asking to create extra tension. Mm -hmm. um, I would prefer to get my strength from doing exercises on the guitar and adjusting the tension that I need to fit the situation. But I know that's not the only way to see it. Mm -hmm. I would never argue with somebody who says they use a ball or mm -hmm. other techniques that, and it helps them. If it helps, I say, great. Yeah, more power to it. But you. I don't do that. Cool. All right. Well, I think those are all the questions for today. I think it's time for a wrap. I did do exercise, by the way, one time, push-ups with my fingers. It's, you know, it's a martial arts thing. It was, and it didn't help my guitar playing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that it would. Okay, we've got a raffle. Raffle, got yay! lots of folks this month, which is good. It means you guys are practicing. So the raffle, again, for anybody who came on since I announced this, is for those who are Real Guitar Success membership, and have completed the practice session every month. I create 20 lessons, one per day during the weekdays that have different aspects of playing guitar, including finger style, Travis picking, scales, uh, exercises, chords, strumming. And each day they get a new session to work on. They include play along tracks, all the tablature written out. When they complete it, all they have to do is play through it and try it once. They can save it to their favorites if they want to come back to it. But the idea is to just check them off each day. As they check off all 20, they're entered in the raffle for the $50 Amazon gift card. Yeah. Okay, let's see who it is. The winner is... Lester. Lester P2 at Roadrunner. Welcome, Lester. You did it. Congratulations. Yay. And thanks for everybody who participated. Your biggest reward is you're better at guitar than you were last month. Oh, what a beautiful note to end on. Okay. We're going to close up for today. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our community. We'll do it again next month. Yeah. December. Thursday. 
uh, 12 noon here in the Pacific Standard Time. And I forget what the first Thursday of December, but we always are here on the first Thursday of each month. So hope to see you back and bring all your friends. It's the last one of the year, so we should cool. do something special. Okay, I've got to think about that. Maybe I'll that. wear a cool hat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye for now, everybody. Bye.